Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. Today we're going to be talking more about these fractals that we mentioned in our last video. So I want to talk about what actually makes a fractal, and I want to talk about one of the earliest fractals to come out, which is the Koch snowflake. Um, so Koch was a Swedish mathematician, lived from 1870 to 1924, and he was one of the first geometricians who was working with the idea of fractional dimension. And so I want to talk a little bit about the Koch segment before we get to our programming part. So I'm going to draw a segment that is three lines long. So in other words, the perimeter of this segment is three. And if I was to make a triangle out of it, its perimeter would be nine. But if I were to take this segment and I was to take the middle third of the segment out and instead replace it with two of these segments that were exactly the same length, then I would end up with a perimeter of four. Notice what I'm doing here is I'm essentially taking the middle third of this segment and removing it. If I was to do that again, taking the middle third of each of these segments, and replacing it with two more segments, I would have something that goes up and down like this, then back, then there, up, down, and back, this, up, down, and back, this, up, down, and back. And keep in mind that I took out one, two, three, four, so I subtracted four thirds, but I really added another four thirds, so I really added eight thirds. So now my perimeter is going to be whatever 4 plus 8 thirds is. Well, that's 12 thirds plus 8 thirds, which would be 20 over 3. And 20 over 3 is actually 5 and 2 thirds, so 5.6 repeating. Notice that if I were to continue this pattern by doing this another time, my perimeter keeps going and going, and eventually I'm going to end up with some convoluted shape. And of course I'm doing a very rough sketch of it here, but this would actually have an infinite perimeter. So in other words, we really would have surpassed one dimension. So we really would have went into the second dimension here. And in calculating this idea of a fractional dimension, somewhere between a one-dimensional and a two-dimensional, I'm actually getting something that's getting away from the idea of perimeter and getting closer to the idea of filling space or area. And we can actually calculate the, um, the idea of perimeter here by doing the natural log of the ratio of these perimeters. So natural log of 4 over 3. And this actually ends up getting us a very, you know, not a 1, but actually a fractional dimension somewhere between 1 and 2. So with that being said, I want to go through how we would actually program this in Sculpt. Remember, the idea here is that when I have a segment, I want to take the middle third of this segment, draw a third of the distance, then turn 60 degrees, and go that same distance, then turn it back the other direction 60 degrees, and then do a third of the distance. So in other words, if I want to do this Koch curve, I want to go forward a third of the distance, turn, go forward a third of the distance, turn, go a forward of a third of the, a, you know, go forward again, and then turn, and then go forward as well. But in each of these, I'm going to have to do the a third of a distance as well. So I've got my iteration, my iteration that's getting me closer and closer as I'm taking this distance and I'm dividing by three. And I'm getting closer and closer to what we call our base case, which would be determined by the number of steps. So we're going to talk about this number of steps, how this is actually going to be something we can select, and we'll also talk a little bit about the dangers of this. But we're going to go to sculpt.org real quick, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get to our desktop, and we're going to get rid of all of this code. We're going to put our name in the comments, and we're going to import from our turtle library, T-U-R-T-L-E, and we're going to instantiate a turtle object, so T gets turtle turtle. And now what we want to do is we want to define a Koch segment. So I'm going to have a Koch segment, which is going to be some length and also some step. And the idea is that as I go through this process, my length's going to get divided by three, but I'm going to make sure I'm still doing the same number of steps. So what we're going to do is 
you know, set up the scope that we've got here. Remember that we have to talk about our base case. So if step is equal to zero, then all I want to do is I want to do t dot forward the length. In other words, I just want to go forward. If the step is not yet zero, then I'm going to want to go through this process. So I'm going to go ahead and define that my length is going to change. So my length is going to get a new value. It's going to be whatever the length is divided by three. And my step is going to get whatever my step is minus one. So in other words, I'm going to decrease the step. And both of these are my iterations to my base case, which is when this step is equal to zero, that's my base case. So now I want to continue with the process here. Keep in mind that we're supposed to go forward our current length, which we've already decided to divide by three. So we've already taken care of that. So I'm going to say, let's do Coke. And we're going to do our length and our step. Both of these values have already changed. Length has already gone down by a factor of three. Step has already gone down once. And then we're going to tell our turtle to turn right 60 degrees. And then we're going to do our coke again with the length and our step. Then t dot left 60 degrees. Actually, we need to go 120 degrees to, to form the rest of that triangle. Coke, length, step. And then t dot right 60. And then coke, length, step. And what you'll notice here is the same idea we had when we were dealing with our binary trees. We go to one direction, one angle, we compensate by doing twice that angle going in the opposite direction, and then we right ourselves by going back that angle in the direction that we started with. So we're ending up facing the same direction. Notice that we're doing four steps. So here's coke, here's coke, here's coke, and here's coke. So we were doing four of these steps in that three segments, that segment where we divided the length by three. So what we're going to do, that don't need that slash there. So we're going to set up our code here. So I've already got my turtle. I'm going to go ahead and t dot pen up just because having it in the middle of the graph is going to cause a problem. I'm going to t dot set position to negative 150, negative 150. That's going to move it down to the bottom left hand corner of our graphics window. Oops. And then we're going to put our pen down again. And then we're going to do a Coke segment. Uh, let's go ahead and do 200 comma 3. And so this should draw one Coke segment for us. Let's go ahead and run this. And so I see it down here. It's doing that Coke segment that we were talking about. And of course, it's it's fairly convoluted. This is the three-step iteration, so it's it's actually doing three of these little. Uh, it's dividing this original segment into that part got removed, so we had that, and then each of these segments are getting cut ahead. Here is our Coke segment. Now, the, what this is actually called is this is a more familiar to a lot of people is what we call the Coke snowflake. The idea behind a Coke snowflake is that if we were to take this and do this three times for index and range of three, and we do the following. First thing we do is we do a Coke segment, and then we take our turtle and turn it left 120 degrees, then we're actually going to draw three of these Coke segments, and by turning 120 degrees, we're actually going to get a nice little triangle. So let's get this to work. So index and range three, Coke, 200 comma 3 and then t dot left 120. Why are you not working? Hmm. Has it worked before when we just told it to do a Coke segment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I do 4 index in range 3 colon, if I do that, that should work, right? Yeah, that works. And then we're going to tell it to do t dot left 120 degrees. And I'm also going to stick uh, a speed up in here because my turtle's kind of so slow. So we're going to do t speed 10. That's our fastest speed of our turtle, just to make it do faster. That's not liking that. It's not starting over. Interesting. Let's get that out of the way. It's this 
this t dot left seems to be the issue that's causing problems. Stop. Okay. So this is tapped over. So if we do t dot left 120, there we go. And then we're going to put that speed up in here. So we're going to say t dot speed to 10. And now we should have a much faster turtle. So let's do this one more time. This should get us going. And we're doing the speed of 10 just to get this to draw much faster. Notice that it's going to draw one complete Coke segment. And then it's going to turn 120 degrees and draw the other Coke segment. And then it's drawing the third Coke segment. And we've got something that looks an awful lot like a snowflake. Now if I were to take this and make this a 2 instead of a 3, this it's only going to do 2 levels deep into the coke, and so it's actually going to be just a very simple form. But if I were to bump that up to a 4, let's go ahead and bump this up to a 4, and we'll see something happening. There it is now, and we see this much more level of detail. Should be 3 times as much detail to get this coke snowflake. So the idea here is that we're using that same idea of recursion, where we have iteration that goes to a base case. And here our iteration is where we're decreasing the step by one each time, and our base case is when our step is zero, we just draw a segment. And this is going to allow us to continue to do more and more convoluted shapes. Every time I add another step, I'm adding more perimeter but keep in mind that this snowflake is bound by this rectangle. So this rectangle, I mean the snowflake that we have here, actually has an infinite perimeter, but a finite area. And that's one of the really interesting parts that makes it a fractal, is that it kind of lies between the first and second dimension. So we're going to let Mr. Koch finish his illustration here. What we're going to do next time is we're going to talk about another famous uh, fractal, but we'll leave that a discussion for next time. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.